Hello everyone, welcome back to some more hacking tutorials for loading up Homebrew on your Wii U and using it to hack certain games. Last time we used JGecko U to be able to inject codes into the game and be able to manipulate data that was already given to us. So now, this time around, we're going to be using TCPGecko.net to be able to actively view memory and find addresses. So, same principle as last time, load up loadine.ovh. But this time we're going to be selecting a different program. We're going to be selecting TCP Gecko plus Kernel um, as our boot option for the firmware exploit. So this will cause it to start running Kernel Exploit 31, and it shows that we're supposed to go back into the browser right after the exploit is finished running. So once it finishes loading up the kernel, we'll be booted back to the Wii U menu. If successful, close that and go back to the internet browser. If it was not successful, then you'll need to power down your Wii U and try again. So now go back to the web browser and into loadine.ovh again, and it should update the page to step 2, running TCP Gecko. So once it finishes loading up the exploit and boots us back up to the Wii menu, we'll be good to go. Now here's the part where everyone has trouble running tcpgecko.net, is that it doesn't always connect to the Wii U IP address. Um, it has about a 50-50 shot for me most times. The way I do it is that I tell it to go ahead and start to connect to Wii U from the Wii U menu, and I'll let it run for a little bit before I actually start to try to boot up my game. In this case, we're going to go back to Hyrule Warriors for, from the eShop, and if it gets a connection timeout error, just tell it to retry again while the game's loading up. Might take a few attempts at this to be able to get yours to connect, but overall it should work relatively well. Um, eventually, anyways. Now that the game's booted back up, I'm going to close out of the game, back to the Wii U menu, and now it is finally connected to, um, to the Wii console. So, now that's connected to the Wii U, we can go back up into Hyrule Warriors and relaunch the game, and we'll be able to access the memory of the game now. Um, if you still have connectivity issues on your end, uh, some troubleshooting steps would be involving disabling your antivirus for temporarily and disabling your Windows firewall well, temporarily, or any other firewall software that you might have, including those that your antivirus system might already include. If the connection works after that, then you'll need to find out how to add an exception to the list of your firewall or antivirus program to allow the connection. Now, another thing about tcpgecko.net is that it has is riddled with unhandled exception errors whenever you try to do certain things. Um, just hit continue and it should still work just fine, but it does get a bit of annoying um, after a while. But now that we've got tcpgecko.net connected, we can go ahead and start loading up the game and altering the memory. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the bazaar here real quick and show off some inventory management hacks. So last time I did cover the rupees, I'll go ahead and go over that again as a how to find a memory address in a little bit later. But for right now, I'm just going to be going and showing off how memory altering works in Gecko.net. So now we'll be looking at the materials list here and we'll be going to address 10 on the drop down box and in the fill in box we'll be using 356234C0 and that should get us to where the materials list is as you can see the value right over here at address 4 is the material for the metal play and the monster tooth and the addresses following those are for each subsequent um, material after. So what we'll be doing is we'll be going in modifying all these addresses to include the value 03E7, which is 999 in hex. So as I said, mentioned in the last video, being a 32-bit value, we had to have free space um, to compensate. And since each of these addresses are used for multiple uh, drops, what we have to do is put a 0 before the 3E7, 
and then put another zero before the next 3e7 to modify the second drop in that address. Alternatively, if you only want one ad one um, item maxed out, you can just put the 0, 3e7 for that item and leave the other one as is. Um, but why would you want to do that? You would want all the items to be maxed. So this is a bit of a lengthy process. Um, alternatively, you could create a code in JGecko to be able to point to this address and change the value to repeating 0, 3e7s all the way across each uh, address to make it a little bit faster, but just for the sake of showing off how memory editing works in this, I'm doing this here and not in JGecko. Um, but it should work the same way in that program as well, just whichever works easiest for you. Um, as you can see here, this is where the pointer leads to, if we double click on it and view it. But that's meant for like pointer updates and trying to pinpoint um, locations for updates later on. You will need that if you need to update your address, or if you don't know the offset. But anyways, just showing off, um, whenever we modify these addresses, exit out of the apothecary and back into it, it shows the updated value for it, which means that we got it to work. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this for all of these real quick, so just let me have a moment here and fast forwarding. Okay, so as you can see, we have all the material maxed out for the bronze, silver, and the gold. So now I'm going to go over showing how to do the address finding in real time. Um, what you're going to need to do is go over to the search function and modify it so that way you can search the proper memory range. Now, this is where things get a little bit tricky as well because um, you have to have a little bit of an idea of where memory is accessed. Um, usually though, all memory is accessed in the 10 spot from the drop down menu from my personal experience. Um, and then the memory address range varies from game to game significantly, but um, it shouldn't be relatively too difficult to be able to find it as long as you're searching in the proper area to begin with. Some of the stuff can be pretty easily determinable about where in the memory it's going to be found. So right now I'm just looking up um, what the rupee value is in hex and what memory range we're going to be looking for. So in this case, um, it is going to be that same um, 356, well it's going to be 3560 range instead of 3562. So it seems like a lot of the item and stuff is handled in the um, 356 range of addresses. Then we put the value down here as the current rupee value. Then once we do that, we hit search, and all the different values that reach that address, will have that address, um, will pop up. What we'll do is then we'll spin some of the rupees to be able to get a new value, and we'll convert that to hex real quick. And then we'll put that into the uh, new value and refine the search. And that should leave us with just one address, which we can then go right click it and tell it to go to memory view. And we can see where it is in the list of all the stuff to be able to modify it. 
from there we can go ahead and start poking it with different values to make sure that it is indeed the correct address, that it's updating properly, and be able to create uh, codes and find pointers and all that good stuff they could use for updating later on. So as you can see the value of the rupees went back up when I poked a new value to be able to get to ma max rupees again. So that shows that we got the right address on the search. So that will actually do it for this video. Um, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully that explained everything. If you still have any other questions, let me know and I'll try to answer them. And hopefully you guys have fun.